Hi, pottery peeps. Um, this is present day Tiffany. I am just over two weeks out of surgery and doing great. This surgery night and day compared to the knee replacement that I had in March and the knee replacement that they get to redo at the end of November. So I get to do this again. So I'm very, very grateful that this one has gone so well. So off the walker, used a cane for a couple of days till I kept forgetting where I put it. So decided I didn't need it regardless of what my physical therapist said. Anyway, um, my best or my goal is to get back into the studio um, because that's the best medicine for me. And uh, the sooner I can get back there, the better. Better for everybody because um, too much time on my hands doing nothing is not good for anybody that I live with. Um, by the way, if you saw the cauldron mugs, here is the finished ghost. Turned out super, super cool. I'm very, very happy with it. Anyway, and here's my little boo. So, I'm going to sit here and recover and dream of the mud. <laughs> I am going to turn you over to past Tiffany, who was brilliant enough to um, film a couple of videos and have them in the queue. She's going to teach you how to make angels. So, from ghosts to angels. Kind of works. And... Um, there's a little fairy surprise along with it. Also, I wanted to send a shout out to everybody that you guys have been so amazing to send such healing thoughts and well wishes. It's been so appreciated. I really appreciate you. All right, go and have fun and make some angels and show me what you do. Okay, bye. Good morning, pottery peeps, or afternoon or evening, wherever you are in this crazy world that we live in. Um, welcome to Hobble Creek Pottery. Um, first, before I get started, I was um, reminded by Monique and Bonaire, who has um, a YouTube channel that I will link below. I have followed her probably since she's got her channel up, and she's the most amazing, inspiring, fun, um, hippie soul um, potter. I just absolutely love her videos. Um, they're just so inspiring and she's such an artist. Anyway, she um, called me out because um, apparently I don't introduce myself. Uh, my name is Tiffany, um, Tiffany Helmer. I have been doing pottery, got started in pottery in 1983, been serious about it for probably the last 20 years. Um, it's kind of been my side hustle. My um, first, um, I, I'm a USA Today bestselling author under Tiffany Helmer. And uh, I did that for quite a while, and uh, pottery was the side hustle. And it kind of saved me in the sense that if I had a problem with characters or plotting or whatever, I'd just go down and throw and let my subconscious work it out, and it figured it out. Anyway, um, kind of reached burn, burnout on uh, writing and decided to make the pottery um, the main gig. And I haven't been happier. Um, not stressed out at all. <laughs> Even if I have a show or holidays coming up or surgery coming up. And no, I, a potter's life is just the best life. And um, it's the best decision I ever made was to um, make pottery the full time. And now writing's the side hustle <laughs> when I get back to it. And I eventually, for those of you who um, have read and loved my books, I probably will get back to it someday, but just not today. Today I'm going to play in the mud and enjoy this beautiful fall day. Anyway, let me give you, before we get started, I have got to give you a tour. We were up Friday night before our big studio sale, finishing our deck extension on the studio, literally with flashlights. I was holding flashlights for my husband, who was complaining that it was too dark and he couldn't see, and, and I was telling him, too bad. <laughs> You got to get it done. <laughs> you had all summer. Anyway, he did an amazing job. So let me take you out here and show you the studio's new addition. Isn't this amazing? Oh, I just love it. I love being outside. And Utah, for all its faults, <laughs> it does have amazing, amazing falls. Um, and I shouldn't say Utah has a lot of faults. It does. Every place you live has faults. I just um, never thought we would stay here. We were supposed to come down here for a little while and then go back home to Alaska. And um, 
part of me still wants to be in Alaska, but when it's fall in Utah, I love being here. Look at this. And the colors in the mountains, probably can't see because the sun's so bright, but <clears throat> here is the new extension. I need to come up with a fun name. It's been kind of nicknamed the Pot Lounge right now, but if you've got a suggestion for the new deck off of the studio where we plan to work and hold classes when the weather's nice um let me know anyway let's get back to the video on what we're making today and we're actually going to make <laughs> angels it's fall and we should be doing some more fun fall stuff but i gotta get uh, christmas stuff done in the next uh three days since surgery is wednesday so all right let's get to it and i'll lower you down hold on just a second Okay, so I've already got a slab prepared. Again, it's about rolled out 3 8 on my um, slab roller and I've smoothed it. I've um, got the canvas texture out. So this is what we're making today. These are little angel. You can make them as ornaments for your tree or they can be stand, whoop, standalones. Well, <laughs> their heads go a little wonky when they're standalones. You can also, um, put a ball of clay on top, kind of like the witches, uh, so that when you set them down, their heads don't. Well, except for they're praying, if you think about it. <laughs> but I usually make these for ornaments, and I do them in all different sizes, as you can see. Let me just bring this. And if you're wanting to know where I got this stand, I cannot tell you. I've had it for years. So I do them in all different sizes. They're really fun to make and if you're teaching they're a fun class to do and you can even make them really tall and have them stand on your your um as a as a decoration have them stand even make them as carolers um it limits your imagination so what i start out with is a big circle cutter or you could even do if you're going to do one of the small ones um actually let me grab a small let me grab my small circle cutters. You could do a smaller one, but for this size, I usually do a big one. You can also do the pattern that we've done for the witches and the ghosts and the gnomes. And I'm going to start with that one and show you, and then I'll also show you how to do the cookie cutter. Okay? I've got a couple of different cookie cutters again for the wings. You could do butterfly wings. But my favorite's the heart. So if you'll notice, let me show you. This is actually a heart, but it's cut in half. I love, love the way that looks. And then on these littler ones, some of the little, what? not that little one. Hold on, let me grab a, this one's cute. On these tiny ones, it's just the heart. So. They're just super, super sweet. Super sweet um, way of doing angels. So I need to grab a rolling pin. In fact, let me pick you up. I have, actually this is a mess here, but I have a rolling pin addiction. So the biggest problem is finding which rolling pin I'm gonna use. See, I even got them over there. <laughs> so let me pick a rolling pin. I do like this one. Actually, I like both of these. So we're gonna grab both of these. So this one is Sharon Hoppies. I love this poinsettia. It just flows. I love anything that has movement or looks like it has movement and curves. I'm just, I'm not a fan of geometrics so much. I just love the whimsical. Oh, come on, I do fairy houses. <laughs> I love the whimsical. And then this one also is The Frosted Butterfly by Sharon Hoppy. And I absolutely love this. I use this one so much. And I will um, roll out the butterfly and then use different parts of the butterfly. I just love the detail that she's put into this butterfly. Anyway, check her out. I'll also um, link her website um, in, the, in the comments so that you can easily access her. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start with the um, poinsettia. When you roll these into your clay, um, you want to actually press down instead of out, okay? You get a better texture that way. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and roll this one in. And then we will just roll this one too. Since I've got a big slab and I got a lot of these I need to make, I will go ahead. Ooh, this could be a fun design to actually mix. I've never done that before. But for a tray with the frosted butterflies and the poinsettias, that could be super fun. Every time I do something, I get more ideas on other things that I can do. So release your clay from the table. It'll make it easier for you. So this one, let's go ahead and grab a, grab a knife. I'm going to go ahead and do the pattern. And this pattern, for those of you who have not watched the gnomes, the witches, or the ghosts, is just a triangle. And it is six, six inches by six inches. And the bottom part of it is curved. Now, you don't have to use the curve, or you can just go straight. It's just, it's all up to you. Everything's all up to you. That's what's so great about being a potter and doing all this stuff. It's just all up to you, whatever you want to do. However, however far you want to take it, you know? I just love it. There's so many things. One of the things with the studio sale this weekend, we had eight potters and everybody's stuff was so different just so different let me just go ahead and pull this out of the way which is also going to stretch my design but that's all right i don't mind that i mean they're angels so just gonna and even though it is um fall and it's probably about 65 70 degrees it's just absolutely wonderful oh i just love that temperature I'm going to cover my clay. I'm always in the habit of covering my clay. It's probably a good habit to be into. So when I'm not using it, I'll give it, I'll cover it up. All right, make sure actually, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and move this back just a little more so that I have a little bit more room to work and you can see. All right. Woo! Actually, that's kind of fun how they jingle. <laughs> All right. So I've got my cutout, and I did place that poinsettia like right in the middle of her dress. So, so I'm going to go ahead and um, score this. I've got my slip right here, and my slip is just. Um, I know there's a lot of magic water, a lot of other type of things for slip. I'm not that fancy. My slip is just clay and water, and I don't have any issues. Now, when you're doing this one, this is that pizzle tool, again, that I use for the witches and ghosts. It's just a handy tool. So I am going to go ahead and put these together. Now I could have cut that at a 45, but I didn't, I actually want to overlap them because this is the back of her dress and I'll show you why. And I'm not going to let it do that little flip from the, the corners here like I did with the witches. So, so I'm just going to put that together and I'm just going to give that a little wiggle and then press it down. Kind of helps make sure that that seam is good and joined. So it's a strong seam. Let me grab. I've got two different clays going here, so my um, sponges, <laughs> some are white, some are red. So I'm gonna go ahead and accentuate this back seam. Taking this, whoops. I cannot draw a straight line. Save my life. So I'm going to go ahead and just press that really good, go inside, clean that up, make sure that that's joined and smooth. And then I'm going to smooth this too. Now you're making clothes here essentially. So those of you who sew, you could do, and you know how 
clothes work. You could add a little ruffle to the bottom of this. You could do whatever you wanted, you know, flare it out, flute it. It's just a, I'm showing you basically a good starting off place. And then um, you take it just as far as you want. That's the fun. And sometimes I will push this out just to kind of make her dress a little fuller. Okay. And then just smooth that out. And then one thing, I'll come back in. And my one of my favorite simple tools is pin. And what I'm going to do here, let me just kind of make sure that that's on there so I don't poke through. I'm going to give her buttons down the bottom of her dress. And I'll show you what this looks like after. So you can see. It just adds a fun detail, kind of almost like a bride, you know, a bride's wedding dress with all those crazy buttons. Actually, we'll take a, one up there too. So, see how that's done? So let me show you how it is finished. So I love the way the buttons are kind of peeking through her wings. So. So now that I've got that, now I will <laughs> chop off the top because I will, I like to use a bead for these that I hang. I like to use a bead. Um, so if you chop off the top, you gotta leave a hole there. So make sure that you're chopping off enough to where you can string a bead. Okay, and I'll just take that pin again and so right now they're going to be headless angels. <laughs> so I guess that kind of fits in with the um, month of October. We're doing headless angels. <laughs> so, so make sure that that's wide enough that I'm not going to have any problems stringing, you know, anything in there. Stringing a wire, stringing bells. If you'll notice, I've got bells on the bottom of these so that they do chime. Because angels sing, right? Or at least in my world they do. So, actually, I did leave, I'm going to go ahead, change my mind here. I am going to cut up the back, and we're going to give her dress just a little bit of movement. I need a paintbrush. Where's the paintbrush? There it is. All right. So, when you do a slit in clay, like I just did, you got to make sure that you round that off. Because if you're going to crack, that is where it's going to want to crack. So, just want to kind of flare that out. Pull that up. And then I just really compress where that is. Okay? So we've got her a little, little slit. And I'm going to push her dress out a little bit, just so she stands, stands a little straighter actually she's gonna hang so it doesn't really matter you can add arms to this if you want i don't really care for the look of the arms they just make they make the angels look bulky i guess and um i don't know just not as graceful but uh that's just me because you might be really really awesome at doing arms okay so i'm gonna come in here and since we did the frosted butterfly ooh. You know what? I'm going to do, I'm going to cut one of these butterflies out with this butterfly cookie cutter. And again, I can't tell you, see, i got to even straighten it out. How long or where I got this, I would just search for cookie cutters, butterfly cookie cutters. So she's going to be more of a fairy type angel, I guess. So, well, that's actually really sweet. <laughs> so if I, and then it's just a matter of putting her wings on. 
So we'll do one this way and then I will do a quick one the other way with the, using the circle cut out. So I'm going to score this really good. And I'm not going to score, I'm just, I'm going to score some of the side of the wings too. And we will score where we're going to place them. Slip it up. Sometimes when you um, slip, it's a good idea to kind of go through some of that slip too and get it into those scratches that you've done. Okay? That helps out sometimes. All right, so now I'm going to add her wings. Actually, I'm going to stick that back in there so that I, it just makes it easy to have something to press against. And since I did the, kind of the side of the middle, then I can press that. And then her wings kind of fold around her and hug her a little bit. She actually has more of a fairy look, but that's okay. It's the first time I've actually used the butterfly. I just was thinking the butterfly would be cute. So she might actually end up in my garden. And then I like to manipulate the wings a little bit. So she looks like she's flying. Now I won't actually finish her until she's done um, because I want to add a bead and a wire. So these are super easy to make. So they make a great class um, if you're teaching pottery like I am or um, want to hang out in the studio with friends and do something creative. I love doing something creative with friends. Well, I do something creative all the time with, and my pottery students are my friends. I love the fact that we have developed a pottery community with all of us. We had such a good time yesterday. Ordered in pizza, had all these people stop, and I mean, it's good for the ego. You know, went nuts over all the pottery, and it was just a fun day. Not looking forward to cleaning it up. I got a mess in there to clean up. Anyway, um, so this is still pretty wet. I'll probably come back and clean her up a little bit more um, when she dries out a little bit, when she's more leather hard, because she's um, wet enough that she's sticky, you know? So, but anyway, there is my little, I guess my little fairy angel. She might actually, you know, I kind of like the idea of putting a, um, a bead on her. And, uh, you know, she's going to go into the garden. So, okay, let me show you how to, we're going to add a head. Since she's going to go into the garden. So this is kind of not quite an angel. We're making a little fairy angel. So I'm going to do just like what I do with um, the witches and make a ball that's kind of an oval. So I guess it's not a ball. So let me just do that really quick. Because I could easily put her on a stake. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> you know what? I need to make witches and put them on a stake in the garden too. I love garden, garden stuff. And garden um, decor, super popular. So, but I love decorating my garden. I love having all these fun little surprises in my garden, you know, when you're walking along and looking at all the fun stuff. I love all the surprises that you find. If you watch the kiln opening, I bought one of um, Hannah's slugs and it is now sitting in my garden. <laughs> Just love that. Okay, so since we've got a head, now we need some hair. And just like with the witches, I'm going to find that funky heart that I've got. And I'm sorry that I can't tell you where I got it. If I can find my funky heart. There it is. You know what? If you want to screenshot that, it still has the, uh, the code on it. UPC code. It's been a while since I worked retail. So you, maybe you could find out what it is. Um, I need a different design though. So let's just pull out one of our other rollers. And I will take some clay here and we will give her some 
hair. This is an MKM roller. I love the swiggles in it. To me, it looks like it could be curly hair. So, yeah, and this is just, those of you who have watched The Witches, this is exactly what we did in The Witches. So, I'll soften the edges of the heart. And score her head. And then score the hair. And then, let me see if I can do this on the camera to where you can see it. Actually, why don't I have my board up here? So when I place it on the head, I'm using that heart as the part of her hair, you know? It just kind of folds down, and I love how it folds down on like one side of her face. Kind of gives a little personality, a little coyness or bashfulness to her. I like coyness. I mean, come on. She's a fairy. She's up to something. So, I just press that on, and then we will smooth that around her face. And if you want to add a face, add a face. And then what I really like about this heart, with it being a funky shape, I can make it look like her hair is, you know, got a breeze lifting up her hair. All right, so we're going to call her good, even though, you know what, we're going to squeeze her neck, because she's got a fat neck right now, because I had planned to just do a bead. Okay, we're back. <laughs> um, something happened. Anyway, I'm learning all the technical bits. Not so good at that. That's why I married a computer guy. Put him through school. And uh, now he can figure all that out. So I don't have to learn it quite so much. My mind's a... Uh, I'm really creative in the sense that when it comes to the practical, maybe not so much. That's what I have him for. He's a good balance. So I'm going to... So I've joined that. I'm going to smooth that seam out. This is also how you make bells. So if you wanted to stop here, half a circle makes a bell. And then you could easily add... Um, so I hadn't meant to score that. I got ahead of myself. But we'll fix it. So I'm going to smooth out my scored marks, come in here, actually I'm going to set it down because I want to clean that up. So I'm going to come in here and try to do a straight line down, okay? Let's see if I can get some of that clay off that I don't need. Remember, this is the back of her dress. Or the back of the bell, whichever. If you're doing a bell, you could smooth it all the way and so you don't see the, the seam. But I kind of like with the angels to um, show the seam. You know, let that dry a little bit. We're just going to go ahead and do this one too, because you get when you do a full circle, you got two two of these to do. So score one side, score the other, slip, and literally just join them. Put them in there. Okay. And press them with my fingers. I don't, since this is a wider, I don't really need that fizzle, but so I can actually put my hands inside of it. So I will join that really good, smooth it. Clean my hands off, my hands get so dirty. In fact, my grandson. When he was two, started calling me Dirty Grandma. It was quite fun. I quite enjoyed it. <laughs> a lot of people didn't like that, but 
I did. <laughs> because anytime my grandkids are over here, guess what? They get to get dirty. All about kids getting dirty. Okay, so now we've got two of them going. Gonna have to, there we go. Those are cute. These are gonna be cute. I will try to keep them more, you know, like in the round. So again, I'm going to bring this in here, press it in. I also do this when I do hand built mugs. I will do this sometimes on the same. I need to put my finger in there so I could have something to press against. Makes it a little easier. Okay. Not fun. And when you press, it gives this little, you know, it presses the clay out so that it makes this little scallop. It's quite fun. I really like it. And the glaze will break on it. And this one, since I made a kind of a mess of it, gives me an opportunity to do something else. So let's do this. I'm actually going to put this little guy to use. So I have another MKM roller. And I am actually just going to roll up the back like that. So you could use a pin or you could do something like that. So since these are going to have beads for their heads, I do want to have an opening. And I do kind of trim this top so that the bead will lay straight. And you can go like these little, on these bigger ones, I got these little bead collars, or these little collars, um, at, at Joann's in their bead section when I was picking out the beads for the heads. It's just so like a fun little addition, a little detail that you could do. So much to do. Just love it. So I'll just take a minute and finish that, make sure it's smooth. Let's go ahead and cut this one. And I'm just cutting it straight across and then smooth that out. So that you've got a little place for her head to eventually be when she's finished. Or you could also, you know, do what like we just did with the little garden fairy. Um, Put um, a bead of clay. Now, if you're going to do a bead of clay for the angels and you want to hang them, make sure you put a hole all the way down through their head. I think that's one of the reasons why when I originally, I've done these for years, why I originally didn't do a bead of clay is I had an issue with drilling through their heads. Um, with the bead, I didn't have a problem. I mean, there's a hole already there. And um, I just kind of added to it. I just, I really like the beads for the angels. And then if they're hanging on Christmas trees or whatever, you know, you can get crystal beads, you can get colored beads, you could do anything. And, and then the light of the Christmas tree, Christmas tree plays on that. And I just really liked it. Now, with the, this, now, when I was talking about a bell, there's a bell. You would just, same thing, you would string the bell and the wire, you know, in here and have some sort of um, hanger or whatever. But that's basically your bell. Super simple. All right, so let's go ahead and cut. I'm gonna have to go to smaller hearts since we went with a smaller, a smaller circle. Let me pull my hearts out. That's a good one. Let's do that one. Or wait a second. Let me see. Let's see which one. These are different. This one's a little sharper heart. It's a little... I like that one. Let's do that one. So, 
I'm going to go over here and cut out hearts from, I'm just going to find my pattern that I like. You know what? I think I'll do a snowflake. I like that. This frosted butterfly has snowflakes on it. So, so I just cut out, and it's got the... That's one of the things I like about that frosted butterfly um, rolling pin from Sharon Hoppy, is it has so many different designs on it that um, I can choose from when I'm doing stuff like this. So I'm just coming through and pinching the edges just softly, just to give them more of a thinner look. I mean, you could also roll out your clay slab to be a little thinner, but um, I didn't want to start over. This is what I'm working with right now, so that's what we're doing. And then kind of just smooth it, because this is the last thing we need to do for the angel, is put on her wings. So we will do one of these where you could also do designs on this side, because this side, um, parts of her wings are going to show on the front. So if you wanted to design the front, you could even do feathers. So we just did all that detail for her buttons, and now we're going to cover them up. Yeah, on this one, we're going to cover them up. The other one, the next one, I'll show you what I'm going to do. So, let's see. I guess we'll do this one. So score that and then put her wings on. And then I'll just press that really well. Clean up my slip. And then she just goes and is waiting to dry. Since I actually covered up my detail here, I'm going to smooth that out and we'll give her a couple of buttons down here. There we go. So there's the back of her. Cute, right? I'd be just sweet. Super simple. Any age could do this. I, I know you could do it out of polymer. You probably could do it out of air dry clay. So it could be a really fun activity to do with kids at Christmas. Heck, I wonder... No, you couldn't do it with cookies, because <laughs> once you bake them, then they would fall. So we don't want any fallen angels, or maybe we do. <laughs> All right, so she's done. We'll set her off to the side. So this one, let's go ahead and pick another. I'm going to pick one of the frosted butterflies here. Cut that out, come on. So I just took the top of the frosted butterfly. Isn't that just pretty? Such a pretty design. I'm gonna do the same thing where I'm gonna just pinch the edges, smooth them out. Make them a little thinner. And then this is fun. You'll notice on these hearts, I cut them in half. So we are gonna cut this heart in half from the top to the bottom, okay? So now we have a wing, one wing. And you can shape this however you want. I like to give it a little swoop down. Smooth that out, but see like if you just kind of give it a little swoop. It looks like it's flying. So we'll do the same thing to this one. And just give it a little, little swoop. And then we'll come in here and we will join her wings. So just kind of Figure out where the joint's going to be on the back. Score and slip. I'm going to actually slip down. I'm not going to score all the way down, but I'm going to slip down just so that it kind of sticks a little bit better. 
I don't care if that comes up a little bit. You could even have your wings come up on purpose. But I kind of want, like them to just... Let me just... And you can make your heart bigger. You can make it smaller. You could do whatever you want. Let's go ahead and... So, there we go. Just as simple as that. And then smooth it out. And then look from the other side. And smooth under there so you don't... This is what cracks on you. That slip dries faster than your clay. And so it's going to... If you leave a lot of excess slip, you're going to get cracking. It's not structural, but it's not pretty either. So it's a good idea to clean it up. There's a lot of cleaning up in pottery. So there are her wings. Now you can also, if you want a skinnier angel, you take that circle. Cut it into three pie shapes, and you will have a skinnier angel. Or you could use that pattern and have a taller angel and do this exact same thing with a bigger heart. So these guys are going to hang out, dry, get fired, get glazed, and then they will get their heads. <laughs> and I usually put a little bell, hang a little bell on the inside of them too. So they ring. Angel gets its wings. Corny, but cute. Anyway, thank you for joining me on this tutorial. I can't wait to see what you're going to do with this one. So much fun stuff to make with pottery. I hope you're having a great day wherever you are in the world. And if you have subscribed, thank you. And if you haven't, think about it. We have a lot of fun here. All right. Have a great one.